Hey guys, it's Vince. Today we are going to be discussing the finishing of the Gerber 408 Saber Retrofit system that uh, I already discussed in last week's previous video. Uh, I wanted to show this system because I'm getting more and more questions on building custom systems and what can we build a custom system to entail as far as what's included, what's required. In this particular build, uh, once again, this system is going to Denmark. It is configured already to power supply for 220, so all my international clients already know once they pull the system out of the box, they will be using a converter as far as a plug for uh, going from US to European standards. Other than that though, the power supply is already configured for 220. So everything out of the box is set to go. Now with this particular system, you can see here we've got the VFD actually pictured on the back plate and you can see we've got the exact pinout required for the GX16 male six pin connector and the GX16 female six pin VFD interface, interface cable connector. Now, just so everybody understands, this interface cable, this system uses one cable, and you can see this is using my new DS flexion, double shielded cable, and this one cable controls not only the speed from the VFD, as far as being able to manipulate the speed from the VFD through uh, Pumotics in this case, that's what he's using as, as far as uh, software, but he's also able to cycle on and off his relay all from one cable. Now again, these four rules are soldered on. You can see that. They're not just crimped, they are soldered on as well. But again, uh, the full pinout is allocated right to the back of the enclosure. So it does not get any easier than that as far as actually connecting everything. It's all right there. This particular client also wanted to have a touch plate, also known as a tool setter, and input four on the G540 is wired. The remaining inputs that are available with these GX16 three pin connectors have not been wired and that was due to the preference of the client. Now, when I say I build custom systems, guys, these are totally custom, meaning if you say I want one switch wired, I can do one switch. If you say you want the whole system wired, we can do that. Uh, this particular retrofit's a little bit different because Gerber's uh, actually only require three motors, so it is a little cheaper on the client because most chassis the size of a Gerber require usually two motors on the Y-axis. This particular unit only required one, and that's the way most Sabres are set up. But it was mandatory for this client, uh, as they're a company that does a lot of kitchen retrofits, that they wanted spindle control from the actual VFD, and of course they wanted to have uh, the relay natural to, to be able to cycle on and off the uh, spindle at any point. So again, we've got that all integrated with one, kit, one connector right here is a six pin. And this is why the master edition enclosure is what it is. When I get asked, you know, why is this so expensive? Figure in the machining and figure in the fact that one cable controls virtually the biggest amount of control features available, which is the VFD along with the relay features, all on one cable. So again, plug and play cable. Here's your six pin. And that goes right in. And then when we talk about just connecting your leads, he'll connect this into his VFD's terminal blocks. Once again, everything is right here. It doesn't get any easier than that. He gets all the programming information with his HYVFD. Now, the unfortunate side was he did have to upgrade from a Yasakawa VFD because he contacted Yasakawa, and I've discussed this in the previous video following this. He was not able to get any information from them. They did not want to uh, provide any information on PWM hookup. A lot of times the wiring diagrams are not accurate based on specific model types if they still decide to support them. And that's why I tell you guys, be careful. Thank God he was able to uh, resell the unit. And we went over to an HY. And again, this is a 7.5 kilowatt VFD. So massive, massive VFD for his application. Uh, and again, his spindle is massive for their applications. But as far as the system, I'm going to just rotate it so she can see exactly what's going on here because I still get tons of questions on these. Once again, we've got our toolless mounted relay. Ferrites installed on the signal cable going from the G540 to the relay. Full servicing diagram for the relay. So you can see the allocation of colors on the relay in this graphic all are uh, actually... Uh, directive of what you see here. So we see the blue, the blue, white, white, red, red, and black, black. All you'd have to do, even if you're not familiar with wiring, to exchange out the relay, remove the tool of thumb nuts, 
and you're all set to swap this out. He's just connecting the wires in the same pattern he sees here, matching the colors that are allocated. Ground bus bar, you can see that right here. Ground bus leads, these are for our shield drains. Everything comes in here, he's all set. Full continuity on the chassis. Something else, uh, we've got our GX16 wiring diagram for the one coming into the back plate so that this is the one that's actually feeding his spindle. So again, he's got the wiring diagram for the actual panel mount coming in right here. Because I get asked about this a lot. A lot of guys think you just wire the system direct and that's not best practice. You want to use a panel mount connector and that panel mount connector lets it go through the back plate to feed in the leads to the drive. Now of course, He's got passive filtration using a ferrite right here. I don't know if she can get that. It's a TDK ferrite right there. It's matched for the correct frequency. Everything there is all set. So that goes in and that's all filtered out for his actual relay connections. The other thing every system now comes with is a servicing diagram. And this is for the G540. This means if a client has to open the system for whatever reason, he can go in using this diagram and know exactly what the terminal block connections are on the G540 without having to go back to a user's manual. To me, this is just basic common knowledge that we should have this, and I wanted to implement this on further systems because it just makes servicing the system that much easier. He is using one of my new OEM design fans, 65 CFM. It's brushless. Uh, again, 100,000 service hours. Fan is pushing out uh, as much air as the Sanyo Denki from previous systems. The only difference is it's slightly quieter, not too much, maybe five, six decibels, but again, uh, much cheaper for me to produce and Sanyo discontinued there. So it goes just without saying it makes sense. Uh, but overall system, when I say custom, you can see exactly what I mean by custom. Uh, I go as far as I can to make it as user-friendly and as serviceable depending upon what application you have. Now, of course, this budget is not for everyone. They are a full-fledged company and they need their system because they realize how much that, that Gerber being down is costing them. So they wanted this done correctly. They even wanted expedited shipping going to Denmark. So again, uh, when you think about that, you can see exactly how costly uh, that actually is. But in retrospect to what they're making, when you weigh everything openly, you see where we're going. Uh, but overall, you can see the system. I wanted to do the follow-up because I haven't done that before. Once again, everything has already been tested, calibrated. Rev2 power supply, built-in EMI filter, uh, 48 volts, 600 watts, 12 and a half amp. And again, we can see the terminal blocks right there. So when you have all these accessories, like you see here, and when you have multiple accessories connected that require an additional 48 volt input as far as controlling them like the relay which is 48 volts and you also need uh, to come over there and, and mount that relay in usually power supplies only have three actual terminals well on this unit it's got built in 10 for V positive and V negative allowing you to expand the system to its maximum capacity without having to install additional bus bars in order to actually use a terminal splitter so you're not daisy chaining okay and I know it's the only power supply in this field designed for this that has that. So again, guys, I hope that the video has been helpful. I hope it's answered many of your questions. If you're doing a retrofit, consider everything. Consider how the motor is going to be mounted. Consider what transmission you're using. Uh, we had to go over and double check what actual parameters his motors were using in terms of mounting because not every motor depending upon how old it is there are steppers in different shapes they may not all mount the same so we covered that all he's uh, more than willing to go over and adjust the mounts and spacing as required but other than that the electronics is all complete so Again, I hope it's answered many of your questions. If you guys do uh, require consultations, quotes, questions, whatever it may be, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eBay store, eDealers Direct. You'll see the links in the beginning of the video. And at the end, I thank you all for your support. And I also want to wish everybody a very happy, safe 4th of July. Thank you again. Take care.